The final video of these, for the time being, is about kind of futuristic stuff, if you like. It goes into the realms of nanotechnology. Now, I'm sure that, that's something you've heard of, and nanotechnology is currently with us. Some sunscreens use nanotechnology. Some um, sunglasses use nanotechnology. There are a number of uses for it at the moment, but it's still very much in its infancy. Nanotechnology involves working with molecules almost, well, at the molecular level, effectively. Uh, the nanoscale that we talk about in nanotechnology is up to 100 nanometers long. Now, a nanometer is a billionth of a meter. So we're talking about 10 million times smaller than you know, a meter, effectively. All right? Now, that is something we, we can't see, obviously. It's much, much too small. And the aim of this is to effectively go into something called molecular manufacturing. Now, molecular manufacturing is, how can I describe it? Um, it's where we can get molecules to actually arrange themselves into structures that we desire. That might seem like science fiction, but think about it. That's exactly what happens in any living creature. The DNA is the blueprint that tells our bodies what is going on and what to do. So what scientists are trying to do is kind of mimic the way ribosomes work when they turn, you know, sort of amino acids into proteins and stuff like that. Because at the end of the day, if you can put two molecules together, where there are certain parts of those molecules that will be attractive to each other, then they can self-assemble. It's much, much more difficult than clearly um, it sounds. And remembering that you know, we have done this over millions and millions of years. So it's not something which is going to happen anytime soon. But it does have tremendous potential. I'm not going to say too much about it because, to be honest, I don't think you're going to get a single question on it. There are some questions in my questions and answer booklet, which I have found online. But to be honest, last year they didn't ask a single question on it in the exams. It's almost like sort of one of those tagged on things which they think will be of interest to you. And it is interesting, but it's not something that lends itself very easily to questions. So you may come across what they call the bottom-up approach. That's where molecules are arranged in such a way that they self-assemble. There's also the top-down approach, which is likened to, say, giving a sculptor a big piece of rock and a hammer and chisel, and then they simply chip away the rock until they form whatever statue they're trying to make. That is something which we do at the moment but that is a much more wasteful process and very, very inefficient from an energy point of view. So, again, there are tremendous possibilities for it, but at the moment, that's all they are. So, if you are interested, by all means, read about it. There will be some stuff in your textbook on it and there's stuff in my revision guide, but I honestly will be very surprised if you get a single question on it. And since I've made these videos to target the ATAR exams, then I'm not going to say any more about molecular manufacturing.